The darker side of ufology was born in the 1980s with revelations surrounding the discoveries of Paul Benowitz. Benowitz was an expert in radio communications and tapped into secret messages being broadcast around the Dulce area in New Mexico. Benowitz worked out that there was a huge two and a half mile deep underground base being shared by the military and extraterrestrials. Not only that, some of the activities taking place included human prisoners being held for a range of uses, including genetic experimentation. It's believed by many ufologists that there are huge secret underground bases all over the world. Regarding the Dulce base, there was a lot of, a lot of red herrings being, being thrown out by the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Yeah. Um, so much disinformation, I don't know. All I can tell you is that uh, I did hire a plane, I, I didn't fly it, but to, to overfly the site. Um, it, it didn't learn much from that. I have been to the area. Certainly, there, was a, there were a lot of animal mutilations going on at that time um, in the area. But um, in my book, Unearthly Disclosure, I have revealed actual alleged locations of alien bases. Yes. Um, so, you know, I've been quite specific. There was one in Virginia, for example, one in New Mexico. Um, the Manzano Nuclear Weapons Complex is uh, a huge one, maybe two, in the Pacific Ocean. Underneath the ocean underneath the ocean yes and many other if i can say you know in many many other areas as well in the caribbean um, there are quite a number in australia um, there are quite a number when she was shown the photos before he put it in the box he asked her to make some drawing and these are the original pencil drawings that she made and what is there at Delsey from these drawings? It's underground, it has seven levels. There's all kinds of uh, experiments going on. Room submerged in sort of yellow liquid, looks thicker than water. Dozens of creatures in each room. You can't count the tanks. Three fingers, two toes, not human. All we do know, or at least believe from the photographs, is that there's experimentation with human beings. Correct. There are aliens who are living at Delsey. Correct. And we are working with the aliens at Delsey. Correct. Now, another thing I want to reach to you is that during the unbelievable part, I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. It's a biological laboratory. On the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building, we drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes, some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Uh, number the early at that time, number the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were uh, uh, at the rate of uh, two miles a day. It was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken, so we wanted to go down. We wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer or human observers in this case find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up, the gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien greys had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we'd, we'd drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one of the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up. And, well, that's when it all, all the hail broke loose, really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it was about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and you bla use blasting equipment 
you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven foot tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time or reach for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the folder, all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walther PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. <clears throat> this is in late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes, you got a regular clothes on, plus you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment and you're reaching for a gun. It's it's not the easiest thing to do and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. However, in the process, uh, one of them did this. I re all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And it uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because of the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot. Burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents... Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979, our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack, both on the surface of all underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar, maybe some of you are familiar with that, uh, would some of you raise your hands who've heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the, uh, oh, very good, about half the group. Well, Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type, we'll show him everything. Well, uh, these are the benevolent aliens and they've been here helping us. In fact, I picture, I have a picture, let me reach for it here. have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. 